You just watched author and journalist E. Jean Carroll leave the courthouse with a big smile on her face. And the reason why she looked so happy is because justice was served, which is something that doesn't usually happen in these types of cases. The Washington Post reports a jury has found that Trump sexually abused and defamed E. Jean Carroll and awarded $5 million in damages. Carroll accused Trump of sexually assaulting her during a chance encounter at a Manhattan department store. He has denied her allegations, calling her a liar. Carroll sued him last year for battery and defamation. Now, to be clear, the jury found him liable for sexual abuse, not rape specifically, but this is still very significant. And what's arguably even more significant is the fact that they also found him liable for defamation as well, which is a very, very high bar to pass, which means that Carol proved malicious intent. And it's easy to see why her argument was so persuasive when you simply look at Trump's deposition. Remember, he didn't testify here in this case, but this is his deposition. I still don't know this woman. I think she's a whack job. I have no idea. I don't know anything about this woman other than what I read in stories and what I hear, uh, I, I, know, I know nothing about her. Okay, well, I guess the distinction I'm trying to make, sir, is that when the allegation came out in 2019, you said you, you I think it's your testimony, that you had no idea who she was. So I, I still don't. Well, today you at least know that she's a plaintiff in a case suing you, correct? Oh, yes, that I know. Okay. No, but I know nothing about her. I think she's sick, mentally sick. This ridiculous situation that we're doing right. It's a big fat hoax. She's a liar and she's a sick person, in my opinion, really sick. Something wrong with her. Another interesting portion of Trump's deposition was when he mistook Carol for his wife. Let's watch. You say Marla's in this photo? That's Marla. Yeah, that's that's my wife. Which woman are you pointing to? No. That's Here. Carol. Oh, is that, the oh, person okay. you just pointed to was oh, Eugene Carroll. Who is that? Who is this? Point your wife. And the person, the woman on the right is your then wife, I don't Ivana? know. This was the picture. Ivana. I assume that's John Johnson. Is that that's Carol? Because it's very blurry. Yeah. So needless to say, Trump isn't necessarily the most uh, reliable person. I think that's probably the most charitable thing you can say about him. I mean, the man is a compulsive liar, so nothing that he says should be taken seriously. Now, we're going to get to some reactions from right-wing media that I find absolutely hysterical here in a moment. But first, if you're unfamiliar with her story, I do want to get into that because this is important. The details here matter. So she recounted the details during her testimony and claims that Trump ran into her while they were in a department store, as the article had previously uh, noted. And this was either in late 1995 or early 1996. She didn't have the specific year. She just had a little bit of a time frame. But that encounter is when that led to the sexual abuse here. As HuffPost explains, Carol said that Trump asked her for help in picking out a gift for a female friend and that she agreed because it sounded fun, but their friendly banter throughout the store gave way to Trump's alleged attack. In the lingerie section, Carol said Trump told her to try on a lace bodysuit and she replied by joking that he should try it on. Trump then allegedly trapped her in a dressing room, using his body weight to prevent her from escaping. The first push I thought he couldn't have meant that. I thought he had made a mistake. I thought it was very strange, Carol testified per CNN. We had just been laughing 12, 15 seconds before, and here I am being pushed up against the wall. It just didn't make any sense, she said. Then he put his mouth against mine, and then I understood. She said that she struggled, but he had pulled down my tights, and his fingers went into my vagina, and it was extremely painful, Carol testified per Politico. Extremely painful because he put his hand inside me and curved his fingers. As I'm sitting here today, I can still feel it. Then he inserted his penis, Carol said, in court. She added that she had so much adrenaline running through her at the time that she was not sure whether she spoke, but was able to run away after a few minutes. Now, she told two of her friends when this happened, but she never spoke about this publicly until 2019. So she kept all of this buried inside for decades. And she's been carrying her, this around with her for all that time. And now to finally see her get justice that is really nice to see now we're talking about a jury of six men and three women 
And here's what I find absolutely stunning about this case. One of the jurors was a Bronx security guard who said that he primarily got his news from Tim Pool. So if that individual found Carol's testimony compelling, needless to say, it must have been a very compelling testimony. Now, Trump responded immediately after the verdict was announced on Truth Social and saying what we all expected him to say. Quote, I have absolutely no idea who this woman is. This verdict is a disgrace, a continuation of the greatest witch hunt of all time. Sure. So very predictable from Donald Trump. Now, if you're wondering how right wing media is reacting to this news, well, Fox News is predictably trying to distract you. I should say Fox's guest, in particular, Ronna McDaniel, while Newsmax is going for a different type of strategy, and I'm not even going to uh, give you any more setup. I just want you to watch because what we're going to see is maximum cope from Newsmax here. Um, but your reaction to this decision by this jury here in New York City with regard to the current lead in the Republican Party for the nomination? Well, we haven't heard from uh, President Trump yet, so I don't want to get ahead of him. We have heard him prior to the verdict saying this is untrue. I imagine he'll say the same thing. Uh, I, I do think the American people, though, are going to be focused on what's happening at our southern border, what's happening with inflation, what's happening in their lives uh, under the Biden administration. And that's where I think the focus is going to continue to be for people looking at uh, 2024 and ahead. This is an unspecified battery and they're not using the word sexual assault, I don't see where the defamation is. Agreed. I don't see how you can rule, find defamation Agreed. unless you can find rape. I think Agreed. Uh, and Takapina's gonna be appealing this thing uh, tomorrow, but uh, again, don't worry about the money, whether it's $4 or $5 million, that means nothing to Trump. He did not want to be labeled a rapist. He is not a rapist. They, they came back with no. So trust me when I tell you this was a major win for Donald Trump today. They will appeal it. And I guarantee you when the appeal, some of these damages and that abuse charge will go away, too. But the main thing was rape, yes or no, came back, no. That's a win for President Trump. Well, uh, it, as I'm reading this, there is uh, liability for sexually right. abusing and, Agent Carroll. And that's what they're saying, the abuse. They're saying rape, no abuse, uh, yes. And this is a major win for Trump. They actually said that with a straight face, mind you. Oh, well, thank God he's only liable for sexual abuse and defamation. Otherwise, this would be a loss for Trump. Do you hear yourselves? I mean, this is when sycophancy just completely takes over your brain and you refuse to accept any negative news about the person who you worship. But I mean, that's to be expected for hacks. Trump could be found guilty for committing like slaughter of like dozens of babies and they would still find some way to justify or rationalize why he's not just innocent but actually he's the one who's being victimized here so that's to be expected by these fools but what matters at the end of the day is that carol got justice and you really don't see that oftentimes in these cases let me put up a graphic here to show you why this is such a rare phenomenon here usually the individuals who carry out sexual assault get away with it so to see someone so powerful actually be held accountable and be liable for defamation as well is i think really really nice to see so there you have it this is a bit of breaking news i'm sure that more details will emerge more reactions will emerge but just for right now Trump is liable for sexual abuse and defamation, and I'm really happy for E.G. and Carol because I believe her, and apparently the jury did too. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.